Okay, so uh, final part. At least in this uh, first run through. We'll redo all of this um, probably uh, next week, I imagine, uh, when we bring Endu in. But right now we're just trying to get our basic workflow down and a basic understanding of essential Endu Dedu stuff. So, yeah, so all I want to do with my large container now is just apply some basic smart materials within Dedu. And that's like it. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Dedu. And let's see, so I'm going to have to create a project. So I'll go first with the mesh. Let's go to large container material set. There's my OBJ file. Nice. So I'll open that. I need my material ID. I'm going to use my fixed Targa right there. Nice. Uh, let's see, Unity 5 metalness. That's good. I want to make sure I have metalness. I don't want, because otherwise I'll have extra types of uh, files down here which I don't want the extra ones. For instance, the specular has this albedo specular gloss and normal, and I'm wanting the Unity 5 metalness. Right? Okay. Uh, where do I want to save this? Uh, let's save it in large container material set ddo, that folder I made just for this. And 16 bits, nah, nah. let's do a create. And it's going to go through, and it's going to bake a couple of maps for me. And then once those are done, I can go ahead and start applying some base materials, like I said. And then later on, we're going to come back to this. And uh, really, before we go into Dedu, our first stop should be Endu and creating our normal maps for it. Uh, and then from there, going into Dedu. Uh, Dedu doesn't really there, – there's some ways that we can import some bump maps and add them, but uh, it won't necessarily always display – uh, all information correctly so but yeah like I said so this was just a quick run through on this so let's go go ahead and open up 3do so I can see my model here really quick and just I'm just gonna go through and alt left mouse button will allow me to rotate make sure I am mesh centric all right so let's do a control shift C and yeah those are yellow okay I need to actually fix that back in my color map then don't I Okay, so let's get out of Quixel. I'm going to go ahead and close Quixel. No, don't save the project. In fact, I'm going to delete all those files here in just a second. And let me load up color ID fixed. In fact, I don't even know how I missed this. All these yellow things are supposed to be red. All right, easy enough. So let's do, let's select red. And now let's do a color range, select no, let's not do color range. Let's just use our little magic wand over there. I'm going to get U, hold down Shift, U, U, U. Let's do a Shift F5. Let's fill it with our red. There we go. All right, let's do a Control D on that. Looks pretty good, except right in there, so which doesn't even matter. But I'm going to go ahead and fix that anyway because I can. So let's do a box select here. There we go. Shift F5, foreground color. There we go. Control D. Let's save that and then let's resave this as a Targa. So it's a good thing. See, it's a good thing I'd saved this PST file or the Targa, I guess. But yeah, so that was a quick, easy fix. And these kinds of things happen, you know, as you're working with stuff. Okay, so. Got that saved, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And let's go back, and I'm going to go ahead and clear out my ddo folder. I don't really need to, but I'm, I'm just kind of weird that way. All right, so let's go to, back to ddo, and let's retry this. So we're going to do a mesh, large container, material ID, color ID fixed. Well, why does that still show you yellow? Why do you show yellow? That like bothers me. No, oh, I don't know what you are. What are you? Properties, what are you? You're a PNG. Okay, that must have been something created by uh, Quixel or something. Okay, color ID fixed. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back here. Do material ID. Ah, uh, here we go. Color ID fixed. Okay, nice. Open that. 
Yes, that looks correct. 1.85. We are saving this to large container. Dedo. Create. Okay, so this time it should be more correct, more writer. See so what we end up with on this. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's bring up 3D. And we'll go mesh centric again once it's up here. Mesh centric. Do an alt left mouse button. Looks good. Let's do a shift control C. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to select all that red stuff. Okay, so what I'm after is I'm actually going to be after just some base stuff. I'm not interested in weather detail or anything like that. And a large reason is because the pixel resolution I have on this, this texture map or the, it isn't going to be high enough. And I'm going to have to manually do the weathering, which is fine because that's where we're going in the class anyway. Uh, it's very rare that you can just take, some, take one of these smart materials and just poof, throw it out there and be done. You're, you're usually going to have to do some tweaking and working, and, and that's, that's our goal. So for right now, however, I'm just going to throw some painted stuff out there and get rid of the weathered components to it. So I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, let's see. I don't want the thick stuff. I'm going to use like the thick stuff on the skid plate, I'm thinking. Uh, just this scratched painted steel. Let's go with blue, teal, whatever. Not, not that I actually care what the color is, but let's pretend I cared, right? Uh, let's wait for this to open up. All right, so here we go. And I mean, that looks actually like really cool. Um, I see my color map is messed up because these pieces actually should have been yellow. Darn it. Okay. Let me go fix my color map again. I got a little sloppy in that. So this video is like going to be a whole lot longer than it should be. Uh, no, I'm still not saving anything. I screwed it up again. Okay, let's just do. There we go. All right, so back back here. Okay. What do you mean it couldn't be found? Oh, seriously? Okay, there we go. Dedo is the only one I wanted to delete. This is just turning into one of those moments. All right, fine. Bring color ID fixed. Thank you. Turn on my... So... What I messed up is these right here are actually supposed to be yellow. Those were supposed to be yellow. Not a difficult thing to fix at all. So let me zoom in a little bit. I'll go ahead and set up my color here. I don't mind having a predefined yellow, but that one right there will do. And... You know what, let's see if we can pull this off with our smart select. You, you, new. Okay. All right, so because they're on different layers is what's going on there. That's fine. It's not like this was going to really be that much more difficult here. There we go. Shift F5, yellow. And then do it over here as well. And then I'll bring out my template just to make sure that I didn't go over the lines anywhere. Because I'm getting sloppy here. Looks good. That looks fine. How does this look down here? You know what? Let's give ourselves just a little bit more right here. About like that. There we go. Alrighty, so let's resave this. File save. And do a save as. Save it as a Targa TGA. Color ID fixed again. Should be like color ID fixed mark 3. 24 bits per pixel looks good. Alright, close that. Back into Dedo. Uh, large container. Open. 
material ID, color ID fixed, open. Everything else should be the same. Create that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let's do a 3-do real quick. And now let's start throwing some colors on this thing. Actually, not colors. Let's start throwing some materials on this thing. Uh, stay mesh centric. There we go. Control Shift C. Yeah, red. Okay, so back to what I was doing. I wanted the scratched, but not the uh, thick scratched. We're going to use the thick scratched on the uh, skid plate and those parts. So scratch painted. Yeah, let's do you. Create. Okay, and then we're off and running. And it's going to, I mean, you know, you saw it looked pretty good. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of the detail. Okay, so I mean it looks pretty nice, pretty cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn off the light surface scratches. And then on the paint layer, I'm actually going to change the Dynamask so it doesn't have all these chips in it. I mean, it's not that they're bad, it's just that's not the look I'm going after. Although, you know, this looks really sharp over here. You know, on those edges, you know, that looks around all these edges, and you know, that looks really nice. It's just I'm not sure that's the, really the look I'm going for on this one. Um, so I'll hit that Dynamask. Let's see here. I'm gonna... Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to hit that Dynamask right there. No. Yeah. And the no is just going to do it in black and white mode. And like I said, my I'm, all I'm doing is just getting rid of stuff, and I'm just going to go blank. And what that does is essentially gives me an even coat of uh, blue paint once it is accepted and applied. There it goes. Only let's say we don't want blue. I'm going to make this one a different color. I'm going to make it uh, a lighter blue. There we go. All right, good enough. So let's go uh, hit our arrow and let's go back. I'm going to change this. So instead of it being scratched painted steel, I'm going to call this a uh, base container. Nice. All right, so let's come out here. Control Shift C. Oops. Control Shift C. There we go. And I'm going to do the green stuff next. Uh, let's go to painted, painted metal. Go all the way down to the bottom. Come on now. All the way down the bottom, there you go. And I'm going to go with, uh, I want this scratched painted stuff right here. I'm just going to, this thick painted one. So I'm going to do the yellow. Because, yeah, why not? Even though I think I'm going to change it to black. Because I want to. Creating three materials. There we go. Creating gloss. Metalness. All right, so once again, I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to hit this uh, Dynamask for the painted part right there. Do a no on that. So that way, the no is just I'm doing it in black and white just because it's a little bit quicker. And once again, I'm going to go blank because I'm going for a new shipping container. So we'll accept that. And I'm going to change that color from... I don't know what color that would be defined as, but just something a little more like black or something like that. All right, let's select, let's double click that. And let's get something. Maybe a little bit more in that family of color. All right, very good. So let's go back. I'm going to rename this one to be um, skid plate all right and then what am i doing next mildly curious why it won't update my color what do you have against the color i put down there
Okay, it's not refreshing for whatever the reason, so I'm not going to worry about it too much at the moment. I'm going to do a control sh I'm going to come back out here. Control shift C. And let's get these blue bolts. And for those, I'm thinking oh, what do we have under pure metal? No, let's go to bare metal. And oh, how about a stained brushed steel? Yeah, let's do that. Let's create that one. And while that's loading, I'm going to go off screen here and look for some kind of sticker to put on this thing. Uh, shipping um, container logo. Let's do it that way. Okay. There, I finally updated in there. Go it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to start off by turning off my uh, dirt mask. Yeah. yeah. And. Steel base, let's go ahead and drop that from negative one to negative four. Okay, and then I'll go back one. And I'm going to change this to be called bolts because I think they're bolts, even though I'm sure they're not. All right, let's come out here. Just got a couple more pieces to do. I'm going to grab this yellow section there. And this is going to be another painted metal. Uh, let's see. Come way down here, and I'm I might even just leave it at this default kind of orangey color. Create that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, is that done? Oh, that's a nice detail, but I don't want that right now because it is a brand new shipping container. Go team shipping container. All right, let's change my Dynamask. And my Dynamask, I'll just put it on blank because that's what I've been doing on everything. All right, do an accept on that. And give it a second. Okay, so let's come over here, do Control Shift C, and let's get this last little section right there, and uh, let's do another, let's do another bear up here. I'm gonna go with this aluminum. Now let's go with the pure. What do we have in the pure? Iron, silver. I don't even know what that is. Unobatium? Alright. Whatever. Okay, yeah, let's go back to our bear. And I think I'm gonna grab the the what? How about the shiny brushed steel? Let's do that one. Let's create that. Oh, so do I want this added inside the group? Inside, Notice I'm inside this group, which is really the uh, shock housings. No, I don't want it in that group. And this will make it part of a different group. It'll give it its own group, which is good. That makes labeling really easy and clean. And while it's doing that, I have been over here looking at various uh, shipping containers and our logos or whatever that is they're called. And apparently it finished, so we'll come back to that in a second. So let's do, let's turn off my dirt mask. And let's go back a folder here. Shiny brush steel, that is going to be my shock insert. And thick painted steel, this is going to be my shock housing. All right. Now I want to go ahead and save my project. So I'll hit this drop down, go to save project. Very good. Okay, now back to what I was looking at here just a second ago. So I'm going to just, you know, kind of grab one of these and, oh, you know, there's a lot of interesting ones. There was one a second ago that I was going to use. Where'd it go? As though I, so it really matters which one I use. 
Really? That's so strange. Oh, there it is, Carolina. This one. I want to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and open that one up. Oh, good. It's automatically no background. That was lucky. So I'm going to right click on that and do a save image as. I'm going to put it into my large container fo folder and then I'm going to make a new folder for decals so that if I were to have a whole bunch of others, I put them in here. Let's do put my logo in there. Alrighty. So I'm like done with uh, Chrome for the moment. I'm going to close 3do once it catches up here. All right. And I, I need to just bring in my picture. Actually, I shouldn't have closed it. Oh, well, we'll deal with that in a second. So I want to put this on my uh, bear container. So let's select the bear container, open it up like so. And I'm going to put it on near this paint layer, right? So now let's go to where I just saved it, which is inside my decals. I'm going to drag this out here somewhere, drop it there. Notice we got a, once it updates, we will, we will have a new thing there. I'm going to hit enter. Right there and enter and there there is a checkbox up here at the top that's just not showing up because I went off and messed up my workspace so let's see here oh let's not I'm not worried about the workspace at the moment well actually I am let me fix that hold on so let's go window workspace let's just Reset the essentials. There we go. Now I got all my stuff back. Oh, I know I've got a meeting. I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. Let's actually, let's take our libraries and let's make it a tab over there. Yes, I know I have a meeting. Seriously. Okay, so let's bring uh, 3 do back up. Now notice it, it gave the uh, layer the name of the image that I was importing right up there. And let's find out where that is. Okay, so it's up there. Boy, my email is just exploding. All right, so let's come over here. So I'm going to go to my movement. I'm on the logo layer, so that's what's selected. Uh, show transform controls. If it's if you don't have these little anchor points around there like that, it's because show transform transform controls is off. So I'm going to just turn that on here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and. And <laughs> uh, really, seriously? There we go. Yes, maybe. And then I can move it. No, but not really. Ugh. Okay, this is starting to actually really annoy me. Turn my transform controls off. I'm on movement. I'm on that layer. Okay, that was dumb. I shouldn't have had to do that, but whatever. Let's refresh that. Um, actually, that should have moved it probably in the wrong direction because these were the sides. Oh, no, it didn't move it in the wrong direction. All right, let's move you up a little bit further. Maybe right about there. Refresh that. Good. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There, 
go. How's that look? Let's refresh that. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put one of these on the other side of this as well. So we will just go ahead and let's just select that guy. We go do a control C and a control V to paste it. Notice I got another layer there. That's nice. And I want to move. I really want to move. Oh, this is going to be one of those where it doesn't want to let me move it. So I'll just hold down the uh, arrow key. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just holding the arrow key to make it move. So basically, when I've been clicking on it, I'm clicking on transparent squares in there accidentally. And it's just getting kind of honorary to get it to, to do what I want it to. Okay, so let's refresh this again. This video is so much longer than it should have been. Oh, well. Okay, so let's come back to layer one. Actually, which layer are you? Let's hide one of these. Okay. So layer one is down there. All right, so logo is this one. Okay, so let's come up here. First step I need to do is go ahead and show transform controls good. Nope. I'm going to start rotating. I want to rotate it 180 degrees. Good. Check. Right about right about there. How's that look? Let's refresh that. Okay, down a little further. And let's try that one. Uh, down a little further. And it would help actually if I had my UV layout in here. If I had my UV template, then I could easily see where I need to put it. Ah, that's good enough. That'll do. And of course, I can keep going and add more stuff. But we have. Yeah, I mean, they're not lined up evenly. This one actually feels a little too low. So let's go to layer one. Let's move you. Still move you. There we go. Move you up just a smidge. And refresh. OK. All right, so last thing I want to do is go ahead and save this. I'm going to close 3Do. I'm going to come up here, drop down there. Let's do a save project, like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and close Quixel, and when I close Quixel, it wants to know, do you want to save? I mean, I just did, but you know what? Let's go ahead and save again anyway. All right. I'm even going to close Quixel. And then I'm going to bring up my drive, or what I've been working on here. Let's go to the desktop. And so this folder contains everything that I've been working on. So what you need to submit is just right click on that and we'll just go to a send to compressed folder. And it will zip all of that stuff up for me nice and neat. And then I'll have a zip file that I can either drop straight into Moodle or if it's over 100 megabytes, I can add it to my OneDrive. Oops. Add it to my OneDrive and then from there just create a shared link. And Okay, so it's 110 megabytes, so it is too big. So let's go ahead and let's do, let's get this taken care of really quick. Let's do an office365.com. Actually, you know what? There's a video already on how to do that. Let's not waste time with that. There, there's another video on that, so go check that out. Okay, so any questions, just uh, let me know. Uh, 